uh, Carl again with Tabletop Tango. Uh, we've got Eric with me today. Hello. Um, been out. Um, been he's been out of commission for a little while, so it's great to have him back. Um, I have a I'm broken sure, body. Yeah, and I'm sure everybody. <laughs> but not broken in mind. Yeah, not, not in spirit, only in body. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure everybody's happy that I won't be doing another Roll20 API video. Um, so <laughs> we promised we'd talk about um, and do an example of combat. Um, we did a video where it was like a real deep dive into the combat system, how it works. Um, back, I think, uh, might have been episode three. I suddenly forget. Uh, but we promised we would go and do an example of combat and walk through and see how it was going to uh, work out. Uh, we're going to do that in Roll20 today uh so uh, your mileage may we'll see how this works out but your mileage may vary here so um, so you got any thoughts uh about what we might uh show folks today um i think we'll try I and mean, we're, we're definitely playing this off the cuff uh i think we should definitely try and show some of the other features besides just attacking some of the things that you can do for helping other people out um and some of the interesting situations you can get into. Yeah, and, and then Eric did a great job. He added a few interesting uh, edges to the different characters that uh, we'll, we can bring up as we go along. Uh, so here I've got my uh, map up, and we have our adventuring party of four, Eagle Eye, Aldous, Dr. Dreams, and Grunk. <laughs> You're a names. weird pack. Now, this is definitely going to be a medieval style. There's no magic, but this is medieval. So, you know, when you have powers, when you have a more modern setting, which maybe we'll try to do later, um, it's definitely different. It's kind of a totally kind of different battlefield uh, when there's guns. Yep. And then we have, going against our intrepid band, we have uh, some goblins, some orcs, and then an orc chieftain who's commanding them all to uh, do his bidding. So I already brought up, um, but so this isn't a tutorial on Roll20, but no. uh, Roll20 allows you to do uh, turn order using cards, which as we talked about in our uh, combat overview, cards are what's used to define initiative in Savage Worlds, <laughs> and this allows you to do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and- uh, first Before you know, do that, Carl, let me uh, actually add another turn for Dr. Dreams. Because Dr. Dreams is both level-headed and calculating. So these are some of the cool initiative edges you can get into. Um, besides the team leader, Dr. Dreams is also very smart and is very tactical-minded. So there's actually an API you can use in Roll20. Again, we're not going to get into it, but this is a really kind of quick and dirty way to show level-headed. Yeah, so, so he's level-headed and he also has calculating, correct? Yes, so, so basically, he can decide, like, this is the, that's a really cool combo, which I think we talked about in either, I think we talked about in episode two. I, I or believe we did, yeah. at the, um, Where you can kind of, in this case, like, because initiative changes every round. So every round, you can either see, do I want to go kind of quicker, quicker first or, you know, close the first? Or do I want to wait and hang back and kind of do multiple things and kind of get rid of those penalties? So, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool combo, I think. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. It's, it's nice. So... Um, so let's go ahead and any other thoughts before I go ahead and deal the cards? No, uh, well, and then also just, to, just to show initiative edges, uh, Aldous is quick. So we'll, we'll deal with that if that comes up. Okay. I'm having a little <laughs> trouble with my, my screen here. I keep bouncing off. So I love my Mac, but the controls are getting a little flaky here. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and deal our initiative. Um, so we'll deal uh, cards in our turn order. We'll set them up uh, by so card suit. We got. And so we nice. have, so Grunk, Eldis, Dr. Dreams has got a 10, and then a Dr. Dreams also has a two. And he gets to choose which one he wants to use. And then all the creatures sort of uh, are screwed. They go last in order. Now, you know, uh, if the GM was running, um, was running this he could probably he could throw a benny and change <laughs> turn order if he wanted to or get another card but we're not going to do that um so let's go ahead and start off grunk is our first our first um he's got first move so 
So you got oh, any, yeah, so. you got any thoughts on uh, he's a close in fighter, right? Yeah, he's like a barbarian. Yeah, um, so, so he's going to want to close that gap. Kind of just pure gap. strength and vigor, kind of tank, tanky. Uh, he's definitely going to want to close in. But um, Aldis is up first. Aldis also, yeah, yeah, he's going to go right into that bridge. Because um, he has a shield. Now, it's far away from the goblin. Uh, let's take a look at Grunk. Um, did I give him... Yeah, let's say he has the pace edge, too. Um, okay. You're going to give him the pace edge, which... Fleet-footed. Fleet footed. Fleet-footed. Which is very good for melee. So he has eight inches. He's kind of far back. He'd probably be actually be... Let's set this up a little bit. Um, it'd probably be more like this as they're approaching. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, let's get the party. What's your turn order? Put your token where it belongs. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh... So, you know what? I think he's still going to... He's crazy. He's going to... Why doesn't he do a run action? And um, one of the cool things you can do... So, Grunk has a shield. Um, he's going to try to shove this goblin off the bridge. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Pretty legit. That so sounds he's like gonna a run. idea. So, remember when you run... Um, uh, he has actually a D10 running die from... Um, from uh, fleet footed so i'm going to roll that running die and roll 20 you can see the rolls i got him up so he runs 12 inches so he's so going to be right there perfect just enough um which is now going to apply a minus two but he's pretty confident this is a little fucking right, so when you run oh, you sorry, get a minus two <laughs> uh yeah for your action uh run is a minus two um his shield which uh, it's a pretty big shield. It's a plus three parry, minus four. Uh, well, it should be just, actually, it should be the same. Let's just say it's a three, three. Right? There's sure. three, three shields, right? <laughs> sure. So he's actually going to apply his shield bonus to his shove. And, um, and his shield bonus right now is plus three, you said? Yeah. Uh, so it's attack at the vendor, make opposed strength rolls. Um, he also gets plus two because he moved more than two inches. Um, and he's trying to um, push it off the shield. So he has a minus two, but he gets a plus five from running with his shield, which is pretty All good. Right, so I'll bring up the goblin. So uh, he's going to go first because he's the attacker. Yep. So uh, push is a straight up strength rolls. Now, this is one of the only uh, rolls in the game, I think, that uses an attribute trait, uh, like an attribute trait. Um for the attacker, most most everything else uses a skill now, so this is kind of unique in that way. So I'm gonna roll. Do we have it set up to add a bonus in? Doesn't matter. I'll just roll strength. Um, so he got a five plus three because it's plus five minus two for the run, which is an eight. I'm gonna say he's pretty confident with yeah. eight. Especially goblins have a strength of yeah. D4. Yeah. But he would have to then, before the goblin roll defending, he would have to decide now because that's very important. Right. You have to, if rolls. you're going to spend the Benny, you're going to have to spend it in before the person who's opposing. You don't get to see their roll and then say, oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to spend a Benny now. That, it just doesn't work that way. So you're happy with eight. I'm going to stick with eight. I don't think using a Benny right now is the best for this. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and our goblin. A one. <laughs> our goblin got a one. Um, so, okay, so, so he was affected successfully. Yes, and that is a raise. So he's pushed back two inches. It's one inch normally, and then two inches with a raise or prone. Um, he's going to shove him right off this bridge. Okay. That seems like a good tactic. All right, so, I'll, so two inches ah. off the bridge. Or yeah, you want to push him just... back into his friend. You're going to push him off the no, bridge? No, he wants to push him off the bridge. That's kind of the angle he was going. He could have definitely gotten this angle. And... Yep. And Gary the Goblin tragically died on his birthday. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, you know, he's got to make some uh, athletic checks to see if he can swim or he's going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how big of a bridge, how tall of a bridge is this? Oh, it's just like maybe... 10 15 feet off the water I mean, okay. he's, not, he's not falling 100 feet here you know so he's taking some damage though regardless he's out of the fight right now he is definitely out of the fight so yeah 
All right, so our next up is uh, Aldus. So Aldus, he also has fleet footed. Look at that. <laughs> you like people who run a lot, apparently. Well, you know, me it's good for melee characters to, you know, if you're not in people's face, then you're not doing anything. So right. it's definitely worth it. Um, uh, yeah. What do you think he's going to do, Carl? Um, so he's kind of a smart, uh, dexterous fighter. Well, I don't, I don't think he's going to go running in like complete man-man. Does he have any range weapons? I didn't check. Uh, I mean, I didn't give it to him, but he can certainly have like a something. Well, I think you could bring him into combat. I don't think he's going to be able to get in close and tight with uh, that goblin, though. No. But you know what he could do? He has a very high taunt. Oh, so maybe uh, get these guys a little riled so, up? Yeah, he's going to do a, do a test. Yeah, let's do a test. And then if we go, you know, because he doesn't actually have that many edges. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a, so he has a pretty good taunt. Uh, and I did give him, let's see. I gave him humiliate, which actually means he has a free reroll on taunt tests, uh, which is pretty good. Um, he's actually going to taunt this front orc because that guy is like, you know, kind of close and threatening. Okay. So he's going to yell an insult about how uh, he looks like a large goblin. Ooh. <laughs> yes, because orcs don't like that. Not going to take not gonna take that laying down. So, no. okay, so he's so, going to roll his taunt. So this is also an opposed roll. Three, but because he has the edge humiliate, he gets a free reroll, which he will use now. And that's a two. Um, yeah, you know what? He'll keep that three. Okay. Hoping that they're pretty stupid. So taunt is going to be opposed by smarts. So let me bring up my orc sheet here. And his smarts is D4. So you've been doing a good job of picking on their uh, their weaknesses the weak, here. Yeah. Weak-minded. So let's see how he does. <laughs> okay. So I've successfully... Oh, actually, you know, I made a mistake, Carl. Oh, well, that's okay. We're... I made a huge mistake. Um... The way opposed rolls work, I have to at least get a success. Oh, good point. See, we were he didn't get a success even. So I didn't even work. get a success, so the orc doesn't even have to roll against it. Um, little brain fart there, but yeah. No, that's okay. See, folks, that's why uh, the books, that's why you keep the books around, because you're never perfect <laughs> on everything. I wasn't even looking. I just remembered. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, see, I would have had to look at the book, so. <laughs> that is one thing, too. Yeah, so it's very important for opposed rolls. You have to get the success, so um so, so, yeah. was, so right. it was a good gallant try, um, good college try, but uh, didn't turn out for him. No. And then our Dr. Dreams. Mm, Dr. Dreams. Well, he's the leader. What do you think he's going to do, Carl? Uh, well, he's calculating. Um, so he is. He could wait. I think he should. I think he might want to see how this uh, starts turning out. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good idea. All right, so he's gonna. Is he gonna go on hold then? No, he's gonna, he gonna use his, his calculating. He's gonna yeah, he's gonna him. use his calculating. All right, so then that means he's he gonna go after everybody else. Okay. So now we've got the orc chieftain. Now the orc chieftain we gave um, a couple of. We we gave him. Oh my god, I can't remember names anymore. Um, what did we give that chieftain he had? Because um, I think what he's going to want to do is he's going to want to do some support for his give a, give a su support role for some of the orcs so that they can come in and have that bonus. Um, but he had... Um, so he has the... Work, um, he had yeah. worked the room and now worked the... Worked the crowd. Worked the crowd, which is the um, advanced version. Um, so yeah. he has worked the crowd, which gives him the ability to essentially do three. Um, yeah, it's like, I mean, he's a wild card, right? Yeah, um, he's a wild card. It's basically like frenzy or like, it's like a rate of fire. So whenever you have multiple things like that, you always just roll your skill die, not your wild die over and over again. So, 
All right, so what's he going to do to um, and this and and these edges work with persuasion or performance or performance? Well, he doesn't have any performance, so yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's going to be like, you know, you kill these guys quick. I'll give you some extra grog. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so his persuasion's I, a d6. So he's going to say, "Come on, guys." Give you some extra grog if you do this. We can do it, guys. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do that for our orcs. Um, and what we need is a success now. And I got persuasion up. So he's going to roll three persuasion dies and one mild die. And then... Wow. So I got three successes, two successes and a raise. Um, and we'll use the wild die as the first wild die. And so that's just a three then. Yeah, so he doesn't need it. So he got three successes. Say this guy he gave a raise to. So why don't we put some markers on these? So so the guy in front will give him the uh, raise. We'll make him blue and we'll make the other gentlemen. uh, We'll give them a brown to represent that they're... (coughs) All right. So he he has his team now and uh, gave them support. They're all excited to to go into battle. Now the raises gives them a plus two. The ones who don't have a raise have a plus one now. And then we have our poor little goblins. Um, so we have two goblins who are archers um, that are sitting across the other side of the bridge. And we have one that is probably afraid as all get out to uh, take on Gronk, but uh, he knows that's his job and he'll get beat up if he doesn't anyway, so he'll do that. So our first, so we'll take one goblin who'll come up against Gronk. Grog, I call him Grog. Gronk, whatever. Starts with a G, (laughs) I don't care. And then the other two will use their bows to fire at um, Aldous and one will fire at Gronk. Gronk. Um, Okay. So, so Grunk has a shield. They're firing from the front, so it's going to be a minus three cover for Grunk. Right. So the first one who's attacking melee. Let me bring up his sheet. So I'm going to roll fighting. He's doing one action. He's not doing multi actions because he already has to get past the shield. And he got a five with the minus of the shield not gonna hit not gonna hit so he's no good for him we have another the other goblin one of the goblins because grunk's parry is eight yeah so five normally and three mod from the shield yeah so it would not not happen there so the second goblin shields shields are really good just sorry no no (laughs) go ahead talk a little bit about shields sure well we talked about it before but i mean you could see already they, they have three functions i mean they're and they're relatively inexpensive so they're very powerful in this game i mean you can use them for those shoves they provide a cover bonus but they won't they won't stack with cover but they provide a cover bonus and they also give a parry bonus so they are very powerful um now somebody could try to break a shield which is a tactic if you were like annoyed by the shield um yeah but anyways yep yep um so the so one goblin then who's in the front is going to fire at um our friend aldous now he has dodge, so it's gonna be minus two. Yeah, so all this has dodge, minus two. Still hits though. Yep, so he hits, and so um, we'll do our. Uh, oh, I got this set up to do attack and damage, so let me uh, click that and just look at the damage. So five points i doubt that's going to get past his no he has plate armor so so now our toughness so talk about a little bit about his toughness so he's got plate okay. armor so, so normally his that. toughness is his toughness is five because he has a vigor of a d6 uh but his plate out plate armor gives him four armor so it's be a nine okay so no not even close so the second so this um so the second goblin he is going to um you know, I think just for grins, maybe he should do two actions. See if he could fire that. Oh, Bo's <laughs> got a rate of fire of one. So 
he can he, he's gonna t he's gonna look for some explosions because he's gonna shoot twice at Grunk, who's already got minus three cover for his shield. Oh, we forgot to give Eagle Eye, so Eagle Eye will go after this. I pulled a king out. Say again. I'm sorry. Uh, Eagle Eye didn't go, so oh, uh, so we'll, we messed. We'll go at. We'll use Eagle. Yeah, he wasn't done on the turn order, so we'll just okay. Wait. We'll just so yeah. Eagle Eye was missing. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. All right. All so good. he'll so he'll attack twice. Okay. Nice. First one's wow. twelve. <laughs> Jesus, against who? Aldis. At uh, he fired at at Grunk. Oh, Grunk. Yeah. Uh. Well, yeah. I mean, even with a minus three. Um. Plus minus two uh, for multi action. Oh, the, yeah, multi action. Yeah. So, so minus five. So it's, at least it's not a raise. <laughs> yeah. So it's a seven. So not quite a raise. So so still that shield is you know coming in handy. Yeah. So let's roll that damage. And not not even close. Doesn't not so even not Grunk even. Grunk is not as heavily armored, but um, is uh, brawny. All right. So let's let Eagle Eye go then. Yeah, Eagle Eye. Uh, Eagle Eye has Marksman. So Eagle Eye is going to shoot twice as well. Um, this Goblin and this Orc. Um, Eagle Eye will... So Marksman is basically like an aim. Um, well, Marksman ignores but up but to... But it's only two points. Up yeah. to two points. Yeah. So it's like a mini aim. So it just he's not gonna she's not gonna move right now and then use marksman. Um, so it'll be the first the orc without a multi action penalty. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna shoot the orc. Yeah, which is a hit. Seven damage. Uh, I have to check my orc outs. Orc is wearing some armor himself, I believe. So he's wearing. Well, this would be a longbow. What would a longbow do? For damage. I don't know. Check her out. Look it up. Let's see. What does the book have for that? Uh, so right now the toughness of the orc is eight. Got it. Ranged weapons. Let's see. Compound bow. There's only a bow in the book. Okay. So. Well, there you go. Anyways. 2d6. Oh, longbow. 2d6, AP1. There we go. Okay, so 2d6, that's 7. His He had a 7 plus 1 for his armor, which was an 8, but your AP gets rid of that armor bonus, so then he yeah. had a 7. You rolled 7. I did. So he's That'll shaken. shaken. Now. So now you he's shaken. And, and Eagle Eye's going to fire at the same orc. Now. Did he declare both at the beginning? Well, you don't really have you can you don't remember you don't actually have to declare. You just have to declare you're shooting twice. Yeah, did he declare he was shooting twice? Yes, oh, yes. Okay. That's why I use marksman. Okay, I completely missed it. All right, so yeah. Um, so, so this me, won't be at a minus two. And right now I'm using my quality script that I did add, which is for savage wolves. Would have been a raise otherwise. So that's a hit. Okay. And he's gonna roll damage. Eight. That is a wound. And this guy is just an extra. <laughs> so let's... Uh, he is dead, 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 more He dead. is down. <laughs> and so he did not get to use his plus two. Because <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> All he wanted was an extra grog. All he wanted was uh, to help out. So, um, All right, so... I added, um, I did add Eagle Eye to the turn order. My mistake. I apologize to Eagle Eye. Um, <laughs> so now we have our orcs going. And we have two of them that um, now have a, a bonus. And they're going to um, advance into melee. And he, this one does not have to, does not have to uh, run or anything. Um, and he's going to go after Gronk. And then this now one... He would probably want to go farther down. Can he go farther? Yeah, he could go farther. 
right here. Because this one won't then be can able leave, to then even... can, Oh, that one's not going to be able to make it, though. And then. Yeah. Unless they both ran. Well, this one didn't... The front one doesn't need to run. The uh, one in the okay. back needs to run. Yeah. So, all right. So then we'll have him run. We need to do a run die on this guy. Uh, where's run? A whole one inches. Okay. Oop, sorry. I grabbed them and I didn't mean to grab them. Just enough. <laughs> okay. Just enough. All right, so our first um, our first uh, orc, he has, uh, remember from the support role, he has a plus one. Um, he now has a gang up bonus of plus two from his friends helping out now. And he's still going against Grunk, who's got the shield of three. Uh, it was just that to his parry, so. Yeah. So Grunk's parry is a eight. An eight. So let's do our fighting roll. So with our orc using his scimitar and Oof. so that would have been so he got his plus three but then so he has oh plus he didn't get his plus three so seven eight wow. nine ten so that would be a so ten hits yeah but not a raise luckily <laughs> thankfully for the the shield again right so yeah all right so let's see what happens here a nine not enough against Grunk. Grunk is really tough. Grunk's a tight, tough guy. So stupid, no spirit, but he is super tough. So the second one now, just for grins. So he he ran. So that's a minus two, but he's going to wild attack. So there that gives go. him a plus two. So that just makes him him even, but he still gets his plus one for his support. And so let's and see. plus two from his and the gang up. And the gang up for plus two. But now, remember, he's wild attacks. Now, Grunk's going to, like, level this guy like nobody's business. But we'll see what happens here. So, Oof. So, Just nope. hits. So, four, five, oh, six. Oh, no, it doesn't hit because Grunk has an eight parry. My yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's, Grunk's a yeah. lot easier than I thought he was, if that's the case. So, that is the end of our our orcs and then dr dream who was calculating he was what do you think he's gonna do he has a lot of options i actually also gave him taunt things uh <laughs> so now i didn't look um, at he dr. can also Dream's support he's also sheet. good at supporting um he gets a free roll in support uh he has balser he has rabble rouser he has a command and natural leader which means he's giving everybody a little bonus for unshaking um well so why don't, once he get some uh what, what he support he wanted to support some supporting he's yeah, gonna support uh he might well he has that com calculating though as well um so what is he gonna use that for well first Maybe. explain what calculating does so calculating when you have a uh, initiative of five or less um it allows you basically to ignore two points two pen points of penalties so things like multi-action, uh, cover, um, things like that. Um, well, um, obviously... So the easiest thing to do right now... Could... Yeah, it would be a multi-action. Um, so why doesn't he do that? Why doesn't he's going to support one of his friends? And then also... Um, oh, he has a Rabble Rouser, so he's even better at taunting. Um than, than uh, Aldous. So he's going to um, taunt in a medium burst template. Uh, okay. Everybody around here. It's a medium burst template, which is two inches. Um, and then he's also going to support Aldous. Um, he's going to use the calculating. Um, so first he's going to move forward. Into this, kind of into this tree, though. So we still have some cover. Um, he's going to do a taunt test. Uh, basically saying, uh, huh, he's lying to you. There's no grog. You fools. 
<laughs> yeah, you're fools. You're working for no grog. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to do a taunt. Oh. Well, he got a two. He doesn't like that. I would say he's going to use one of his bennies. So he got a seven, okay. which is much better. And then okay. so each of them have to roll a, a, a smarts roll to resist. All right. So let's start with our goblin, who's not very smart. Well, he's smarter than the uh, other guys. He's got a D6. Well, he failed. So he failed. Then we'll go and grab our orcs. And remember, the one of the orcs is vulnerable, um, which actually, well, never mind, does not apply to... Uh, no, no. Post rolls. So they all are affected. All and... fail. Um, so he'll make these two vulnerable. All right. So and because gonna... he's already vulnerable, he'll make him distracted. Okay, so we're so we're gonna make those two vulnerable. And then this guy distracted. Okay. Yeah, because when you oppose, you can decide what you want to do. Okay. Then Doctor Dreams will then still support his friend Aldis. Uh, but there's plenty of grog for you, my good friend. Ha <laughs> Good show. <laughs> and he critically failed. <laughs> because Aldous knows there is no grog either. He doesn't have any grog. So, so what would, uh, what, from a critical fail standpoint, what would be the uh, interesting thing that should happen now to... Um... I mean, that's up to the GM, I guess. And uh, we don't have I mean, a GM, so we'll... We don't have a GM. We're both GMing this, kind of. Uh, I would say, in, in this instance, uh, you know, there, there doesn't always have to be something that happens. No, there doesn't. There doesn't. Yeah. But it's always fun um, when uh, you critically fail and something interesting happens. We but can just case... say that he was, he was exclaiming to do it, and he fell prone <laughs> as he ran through these trees and tripped. Sure. Why not? So he fell prone and bit the dust. He'll just get up next time. So it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll all be good. But no no <laughs> success there at all. No. Can't even okay. use a Benny. Can't even use a Benny. No, sir. Um, so that's everybody. So in this round, we had some some folks doing some support roles. We had a test roll, some uh, ranged combat, and then uh, came up with a shield and, and did a push. So a lot of good stuff happened this, this yeah. round. So. Let's go ahead and deal. Since we didn't have a joker, um, I don't have to shuffle the cards. I just deal them straight again. And now we have our distracted and vulnerable. Um, Ooh, which are, it sucks they're first because, um, you know what, Aldis, oh, Aldis is quick. So he gets another card. All right, well, give him another card. Let's see what he gets. He got the Joker. So he got a Joker. So <laughs> perfect. So Benny's, could not... Benny's for everybody. <laughs> yes, they all got Benny's. He now gets to go whenever he wants. He's definitely going to go before the orcs because when they when you become distracted, it's always at the end of your next turn. Um, so they would have lost all that vulnerable that just happened. They would have just been wasted. So this is great. So there's Quick coming in. Uh, handy. Yep, definitely. That's that's a. By the way, uh, in the previous video when we talked about combat, that's one of my favorite edges. Yeah. Along with. Although I do think level-headed is better, but. I said one of my favorite. Didn't say it was yeah. the only one. Come on. <laughs> and you can have all of them if you wanted to. So this is great. This is great. So Aldis is definitely going to go now. Um, he has a pole arm, um, uh, which has reach. Um, he's going to go up here, and he also has improved frenzy. So this is going to be a bloodbath. Um, improved frenzy means uh, on two different... He basically gets an extra die on two fighting attacks. So, um, uh, And since yeah. he's got reach, he's going to try to go for both then, right? He's going to try to go for both of them. And because he has a joker, he gets plus two, which means that his multi-action penalty for using improved frenzy right now, uh, it's not there. Okay, so let's so there's a lot there's a lot to uh, parse here yes. for everybody. So let's start off with, um, so he's doing a multi action. He's going to do a multi action because he wants to now because like I said, I don't know if we talked about I can't remember if we talked about frenzy at all. Um, frenzy gives you an extra die, uh, an extra fighting die whenever you make a fighting roll, not a wild die, just a fighting die. Um, 
improved frenzy, which maybe you can pr pull this up later for people. I can um, pull it up now if you gets want. a little confusing. I think people definitely get confused by it. Um, it when you actually look at the uh, wording, which I'm also trying to get it up here. Frenzy, um, why aren't you coming up? Frenzy, here we go. Um, uh, he has it, it's up to two fighting attacks in the same turn. So again, roll a, it's not. Yeah, it says roll a second fighting die yeah. with up to two melee attacks per turn. So it's not that you don't get three fighting attacks. Uh, with you know three fighting uh, die with one with one fighting attack, um, you just get your extra one twice. So to really take advantage of it, he has to do a multi action, which he's going to do. Okay, so um, so he's doing a multi action that's going to give him a and minus he's, two. Yes, uh, and you, uh, yeah, which but he has a Joker, so he, he, he might have he might have done a wild attack before, but now he doesn't really want to be vulnerable. Um, so uh, so now he's, he's just going. So at that point, he's straight. He had a minus yeah, two, he is and he has his plus two, so now he's he's even. Um, yes. So he's just gonna go for it. So he's gonna attack. Let's roll these fighting rolls. Um, he's gonna attack the guy in front of him first. And oh, he just rolls two fighting, so he's gonna roll his two fighting first. And that um, and that dude is. Um, they're all vulnerable. They're all vulnerable. So okay, so he rolled two fighting die first. He is. I don't know what happened there. He got a 9 and 11. He doesn't need to use that 5. Um, so let's use that 11 first against the guy in front of him. Oh, and because they're vulnerable, it's another. It's actually another plus 2. So he got... Um, so with the... Ex sorry, with, with vulnerable, you get plus 2. So that would have gotten rid of the multi-action anyways. Um, right. So he actually has plus 2 on top of this. So it's going to be 11 and 13. So I would, I would think that those are going to be... Raiders. Are those over the... Raises? I, okay. Well, so. uh, well, let me just check. I, I okay. think those orcs... Uh, we'll see how power good these orcs are. Oh, and it's also plus one from Grunk. Um, so it's actually... Sorry. that's So it's nine plus three for 12 and 11 plus three for 14. Yeah, so their parry is <laughs> only five. So you're... Yes, yeah, so that's two raises. So we'll do the orc in front of him first. Uh, that's eight. Um, and has is that got any armor piercing? Uh, it has a plus. I just put a plus one on it, so no AP, just a plus one. So eight. Um, so eight is what their that is what their toughness is. Yep. Okay. So that guy's shaken. He'll do the second attack on him, with a twenty-four. I think he just split that guy in twine. Yeah, that, <laughs> this dude is not in healthy status, as we say. So. And you know, like uh, narratively, I might say like uh, Aldus runs up with his pike. Uh, Kind of just shoves it in this guy's face again, unbalanced, and then does a quick wrist maneuver and just slices down and chops this guy in half. <laughs> and declares, "You're in my way. I want to get the other guy." Yes, too. <laughs> <laughs> behind you, that guy. You are marked next, and he's going to make his next fighting roll. Um, so he's going to roll his fighting die, and again, even with the multi-action, because of all the bonuses, because of vulnerable, because of gang up, and because of his Joker, um, he has. Uh, it's going to be his fighting roll. And then um, plus three. So I'll roll that again. Uh, what happened? Oh, yeah. So there we go. So if you can see that two is not great, so he's going to use that five and place that two. Um, and then keep that eight. So it's an eight and a uh, 11. So one of those is a raise. Yep. Remember so he's going to use his five. raise, the raise one first against the orc. That'll be 15. 15 on an 8? Yep. So I think he's shaken, and then it's 4 above that. Uh, what's so the toughness is 8? It's only 8. So he's has a wound. He's dead. Yep, so he's dead. <laughs> I was going to say, it's 8, and then plus 4 above that oh, okay. is a wound, and he is dead. So, And then he's going to go against that goblin with just the normal... Oh, what happened? There we go. Six. Uh, and the oh, no. Actually, no. It was... Yeah, six. Against that goblin. Okay. <coughs> I think the... Uh, let me take a look at what the goblin's parry is. Uh, Just sorry. Damn it. Oh, okay, yeah. Maybe the parry's low. Yeah. So he had gotten an eight on the attack roll. Oh, his parry's still five, so he's cool. All right. Okay. So what's the damage did you do? Six damage. Okay. This poor gentleman's toughness is four. So he is shaken. So 
Al just just cleaned house with a pike. <laughs> yeah, he. Okay. Um, and then comes Doctor Dreams, unless he's. Uh, yeah, all his orc died. So. Doctor Dreams will um, stand up, which costs yeah, him some dust movement. himself off. Yeah, stay in the little trees because he's. Um, he's just gonna. He has a little. He has a bow as well, so, you know. While take he's a, he's the lead, <laughs> the leader, he can still mix it up with the. Yeah, take one of those. Go- see if you can take those goblins out. They're hiding behind yeah. a rock, so they've got. Well, this was cover. against the one that's shaken. Um. And he got a sixteen, so. Yeah, that would that would obviously. That's hit. nine damage. I think that goblin. That's goblin's toast as well. <laughs> There's just some massive rolls going on. Well, you know, remember <laughs> these are all extras anyway. So. Yes. <laughs> One wound and they're down for the count. So. And I think we. I think I might have overtuned the player characters. But oh, you know. And, and and I forgot that this guy he's floating down the river. So there you go. See, he's floating down the <laughs> river, dead body. So okay. All right. So, Dr. Dreams, that was his second card. And then we got Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is actually going to aim at the Orc Chieftain. So, we're going to aim this uh, this round at the Chieftain? Yes. Okay. And so, then next is our Goblins, who are no longer with us. And then... <coughs> Then all this is his turn this round. Uh, well, no, he already went because he got a. Uh, oh, he ha- that's right. He got yeah. the Joker. But Grunk is where Grunk, Grunk, oh, Grunk is Grunk's next. now. Um, Grunk's gonna run up and attack this goblin. I want to see one of them get hit. Um, should just bring in a troll or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he'll just attack this goblin with a four. Um, and a goblin's uh, parry is five, I think. It's not great. I'll just make sure, though. Goblins are pretty wimpy, so we'll see if that's true. Yeah, parry of five. Okay. So cool there. So now we have our um, our leader. And if he was a smart leader, he'd be leaving, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think let's see what he's got on his sheet for our orc chieftain whether he's got anything that's going to help him out in this situation other than his plate armor he's got a great axe so uh, what do we think is he angry enough to be stupid yes I think let's he's see him be stupid he's angry enough to be stupid <coughs> Grunk is now so he's going to move about 4.5. He's going to move up to Grunk. And he is going to take as big a swing as he possibly can with his great axe. Now he's a wild card, so he also gets his d6. Even though he's <coughs> an enemy combatant, he is a wild card. Um, so let's roll his attack with his great axe. What's uh? That's not gonna hit Grunk, is it? He's eight, right? You said. His yes. Eight. I was, I was checking for shields. Now shields, I know that the cover doesn't apply if it's from the, uh, front or shielded side. I mean, it only applies if it's from the front and shielded side. Uh, but it doesn't talk anything about the parry not applying. Um. I guess that's up to the GM. I w- I would think. And what's your take on that? It's interesting. They, interesting. they didn't put it there. That only the cover bonus is is is, is the you know the being from behind doesn't apply. But I would think the parry bonus also wouldn't. Well, he's um, so okay. So he, so he came up. Um, so what ultimately with all that discussion, what's his parry then? Uh, it's more than that. So unless he was wild attacking, he was well, not you know, wild let's attacking. Just, let's just can, say let's just say he hit him because I want to see some damage. Let, like let's just say that he hit him. Okay, sure. Well, let's say I roll. I threw a Benny. Um, yeah. down and he re-rolled and this time he hit him so he has elon yeah say he's he got, has he's elon, got a lot of good he stuff going on there, so. getting to plus two yeah and so he's got strength plus one d10 um 
because it's a great axe. So let's see what happens here. 29. Pretty, you wanted some holy damage. Holy crap. So you well, got there some we damage. go. So there we go. So he thought, I'm like, I'm a tough dude. Um, God, that's because your D10s both exploded. Jesus. Yep. yep. Nice. So, uh, um, Grunt. Let, let me show a little feature in uh, Roll20 just real quick. So oh, you can see what happened to the die. I set the, I put the cursor over the number, and you can see one 10 exploded and got a 2. Another 10 exploded got a 7. So there you go, 29. Yeah. Um, so Grunk uh, only has 11. So if we, uh, what's that, 15, 19, uh, 23, 20. So that's 4, 27, right? So that's 4 wounds. So what what is Grunk going to do in this situation? With so his Grunk bennies? is going to try to <laughs> soak some wounds with his bennies. So he hasn't used any. Did he use a benny earlier? Um, I, I think remember. he used maybe Aldous? one of the guys used one. Let's just say he's got. He, it we'll doesn't matter. Two. He can still have two. Whatever. No worries. So yeah. he's using a benny. He's going to roll for soak. He got an eight. So that would be I mean, two wounds. That would be two. He has another benny. So he's going to just use that last benny. And just remember, just make sure that you don't crit. <laughs> Yeah, so he got an eight. So he soaked two of those wounds. He now has two wounds, which is not great. And he's shaken. So we go. So, well, oh, she's not doing a good job. There you see. I'm going to add it on wounds. the sheet. Um, but basically, what that means, just to re reiterate, is that any roll that he does is at a minus two, pretty much. And also, his pace is reduced by two. Oh, I made the wrong guy shaken. Sorry, my bad. <clears throat> Gronk is shaken. There we go. And he's out of Benny. It's not looking good for Gronk. Gronk is not uh, healthy. So, you know, you, he did a great job of dispatching the little guys, but he forgot about the... Uh, the big dude. The yeah. big dude. And so our we have no orcs left. So, re, so, uh, so we're going to redo re, it. Now, yeah. we got a joker, so I have to basically shuffle the deck now. So every time we get a sh joker, we shuffle the deck, and then we'll deal them out again. You actually have to recall the cards, I think, for this. I don't think so, but I'll do it anyway. It's okay. fine. Then I'll shuffle them again. And then shuffle, yeah. And then I'll deal them. Oh, that's... Really bad. Oh, they're dead. Yeah, all those guys Never are mind. dead. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was the chief for a second. So Eagle Eye gets to go. Eagle Eye is pissed. And has been aiming. Has been aiming. Uh, I mean, whatever. We'll just say that he was in range. Uh, what is the range? I think a longbow is only 15. Well, for short, right? Yeah, for short. So, yeah, call him in medium range. So he'll have... Um, yeah, he's in medium range, which kind of sucks. But you know what? He'll do... He'll He's going to shoot twice, and he's at medium range. So... Uh, so aim will ignore the first four attack penalties. Um, so he'll ignore the range. For this yep. first shot, ignore the yes. range of the multi-action. Okay, so that that's, things? yeah. So that's going to uh, make him six? At just a minus two, right? Total. Oh no, it's gonna. It's just. It's a, a wash for the first attack. Oh, okay. Because its its aim is ignore up to four points. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and the orc chief then has no cover, so it's just that. So if it's a hit. Uh, yep. Eagle Eye will roll damage. Oh, I let me do that again. Go. Roll damage. <laughs> That's a three. Which our is chief, our chieftain is wearing wearing armor. You no, know, he he has a uh, he has a Benny. He'll yeah, use, use a Benny. That's a five. Uh, he's not gonna. No, that's the, that didn't do any good. That didn't do any good. But he has another shot at minus four. <laughs> uh, holy crap! He got a sixteen. <laughs> so so there would, you go. So that is now he hit with a raise. He hit with the raids. So he gets an extra D6 worth of damage. That is a 15. And that bonus die, uh, if, so when on roll 20, when there's green, that means something that got the maximum value. And then in Savage World, that means you reroll again. So that's why you're seeing these numbers. Um, so that's a 15 AP1. 
Yeah, I just realized we weren't really talking since we were using roll twenty. We we weren't talking a lot about the explosions of the dice, but we've talked um, about that. In we talked about before. that in the yeah. previous video. So yeah, but um, yeah. So every time you see that green, it's the maximum night, and that means it's been rolled again. So so you got a fifteen total. Yeah. AP one. AP one. So his um, his toughness is eleven. Four of it comes from armor. Okay. So that means a ten. So that's at wound. A delicious wound. So we'll give this our. So he did some damage, and now he got damaged a little bit. Now what's Aldis going to do? Aldis is going to run up to his favorite friend. Say, not today. He's gonna, uh, he has eight inches, so he's going to take use of it. Be a range of both. And he is going to attack. Okay, so you got a gang up bonus, so plus one. And he is going to do two attacks with a wild attack. Because this guy needs to go down. He's pissed. So, so that's going to get rid of the multi-action penalty. So let's look at the let's look at the math. So yep. he gets a plus one for being gang up. Yep. He has multi-action, so that would normally be minus two, but he's doing a wild attack, which gives him a plus two. Yep. So all said, he's going to have a plus one, but he's also going to be leaving Long himself way. open for attack should this not be successful. Yes. All but right. he has improved frenzy, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Did it not roll? There we go. A six and a nine. So seven and ten. And his... The uh, what's what's the chieftain's parry? We're going to look it up real quick. Okay. Eight. All right. He's going to use that... Uh, well, first he's... And he probably do the other one against the goblin then. Actually, that's not how it works. Uh, yeah, you kind of... You, you can decide when you roll what, where they're going. So... Right? Um, well, yeah. you're rolling them all as one big mash, but you can each attack you get to choose what the target is. So yeah, so the first one we'll, we'll start with just the seven. He'll go against the goblin. Um, oh no, you have to do it but the beforehand though. I no, I'm pretty sure when you roll something like rate of it's like a rate of fire. Yes. You know. So, anyways, um, yeah, he's gonna go against the chieftain. That 10. That's just a straight damage roll, right? Uh, and that's yep. 15 with the wild attack bonus. 15, and we know that his um, was 11 with 4 armor. How much is his... Uh, what's the AP, no AP on your pole arm or whatever? No AP, just... Okay, so 11, and this is 15, you said? Or no, 14. Yeah. Oh, no. 15, uh, 14. Oh, 14. sorry, 15, because of the, the, yeah, the wild attack. Okay. Um, so... 15, 11. Another wound, because he's shaking already. <laughs> yeah, he's already shaking. So another moon. So uh, he's he's got two of them now. Another die will go against the goblin. 13? 15? Yeah, I think I think you hit him. Okay. Uh, and let's roll that second attack. Oof. Nice. Let's finish him off with that raise. <laughs> Fifteen. And we know that would be enough to do a wound. Uh, he's going to use his uh, one of his bennies to re-roll that damage, because he wants to see this guy go down. Okay. Uh, okay, so the top one, because of the it is 17 damage. So that's another wound. What was the toughness? Eleven. Okay. So that guy's the the chieftain has three wounds. Um, he still has another fighting attack. He got a nine. And what was the parry on the chieftain again? Uh, something I forget. So let me look it up. Eight. So he hit, he hit a, that second, he hit another attack too, so he'll go again. Now let's see if he can take him out. That'll be 13. From the plus two from the wild attack bonus. Oh, okay. So yeah, 13. 13 total, 
Again, he's got an 11 toughness. He's, be a... <laughs> he's shaken already. Yeah. So I think we blipped him. Yeah, I think he just went all out. Frenzy, man. <laughs> well, he did leave himself vulnerable to the goblins who are next, right? Yes. Well, he killed one of the goblins, I think. Yeah. So there's one left, and <laughs> here's, what, here's what he's going to do. He's going to jump in the river do? and swim okay. away. <laughs> that seems like a viable strategy. And you know what? Over. Grunt can't do anything about it because she's shaken. So nope, normally Grunk wouldn't let him get by, but yeah. That's, that's the important thing. His, he was moving and Grunk shaking, so he could not have his, uh, his attack of opportunity there. All right, so... So this shows why player characters are friggin' deadly to extras. Besides, <laughs> um, yeah, but the but the chieftain did was able to do some good damage. So what did we walk through here? So we walked through. We did um, range combat. We did yep. uh, tests. We did uh, support roles. Um, we, we, we did, did a, a clinic on frenzy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. We did a push. Uh, we didn't get any, uh, we didn't get any grappling in, um, but yeah, I think we got a bunch of good stuff in there. Yeah, it was, uh, well, I think this was a really good example of, of combat and being kind of creative and how you're doing things. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just walk up and attack. There was decisions of, well, I'm going to do two because it's the right thing to do at this time, or I'm going to do yeah. a support or a test instead and give my... You know, give my team a uh, a boost in their capability. So it you know it, it goes beyond you know just walk up swing. You can do a lot of interesting things. And then yeah, I, I think what we really learned here as well is um, those combat edges can be like absolutely deadly if you take oh, advantage crazy. of them in the in the right way. Yeah. Um, so um, so definitely players get the advantage there. Um, oh, yeah, I might have overtuned the player characters a little bit. Um. <laughs> just showing off their abilities but uh, and i'm not yeah. sure and, and it's not min maxing it's just tuning those uh, yeah um i wouldn't say there's any way to min max and i mean you can there's not really a, you can't i would say savage was is pretty min max proof yeah um, everything's got a reason for it um you, you can definitely make like a very specific character like a fighter character but you're going to be lacking in a lot of i mean that's i mean that's, that is min maxing but um you know, overtuning one part, but like, there's nothing where it's so broken that it's not easy to counteract if you need to. Um, well, and there's and, no and, way, you know, and, and edges no on really and stuff like that is not really min maxing. It's it's just yeah building a character out and making him unique. So you know, Aldous had his, you know, a lot of unique features to him that were really around. I'm a combat person. With the long yeah. weapon, I can go in. I can run fast to get there, and then when I get there, I can go crazy to really uh, take them out. So um, that was a lot of attacks in one round, you know, yeah. versus those little poor extra um, goblins. <laughs> so. And 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 then Doctor Dreams had set it up ahead of time, get, giving them all vo uh, vulnerabilities. So that made yeah. it much easier too. Yeah, so the party worked together, <laughs> and and you can see that that wasn't just everybody attacking. You know, they were working together in multiple ways. So that's yeah. the cool thing about Savage Worlds is you can have some creativity, add some narr narrative uh, interest to your combat. It's not uh, swinging a miss or swinging a hit. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and so if there was like if we threw in like a really hard enemy, we could definitely do stuff like, uh, you know, using a fighting attack, but as a test. You know, not just as attacking it, just to kind of make it easier to hit or, uh, you know, make it so it's not going to hit other people is, is hard. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. And if you thought the, our enemy was a little too weak, um, you know, that's where a GM could layer. You can layer in um, different levels where, uh, you know, Aldous and Grunk might have had to wade through more um, extras before they could get to the big bad. Uh, yeah. But in this case, we didn't we didn't have that, and then uh, our poor little uh, poor little party of uh, bandits there got cut up pretty easily. <laughs> so, um, so you got any uh, final thoughts on uh, combat? Uh, 
No, I mean, like I said, there there is more options we didn't go over. Um, uh, grappling, which is a good example. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, th this is a uh, like I said, this is uh, it could have been more difficult for them. I don't think we wanted to do a super long um, fighting thing for people to watch. But um, uh, if there was more just like henchmen and more maybe ranged people, that would have been much harder to lead across that bridge. Um, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we, I think the, the, yeah. the goblins had bows, but they certainly just couldn't take advantage of them fast enough to no. make a difference for sure. And I think we saw how initiative edges can be very powerful. Um, I, I think people have a hard time with melee characters, like, and it's, it honestly depends on the setting. If there's more, if there's a lot of range stuff, like you really want to go. If you want to be melee, then you really have to kind of again not min max, but like tune, like optimize. Um, because you'll just get killed like otherwise. I mean, we didn't really see it here because it wasn't really many bows and stuff. But if you know, if there's guns or just more powerful ranged weapons, then you really have to think about okay, stuff like like how we had them all have fleet footed, right? And to just to engage quicker and stuff like dodge, stuff like shield. So this was almost a combat example of melee. Like <laughs> this was like a melee combat example, really, um, yeah. showing how powerful and then some of the support stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if this would have been all range combat, it definitely would have uh, looked different. There'd been a lot Very more different. cover, yeah. a lot more people trying to, you know, avoid uh, uh, being out in the middle of, of the yeah. combat. So, um, all right, well, great. Uh, hopefully this was useful as a um, detailed rundown um, combat example that I've been promising. Um, that we've been <laughs> promising and um, go back if you want to learn the basics of combat just as an overview a walkthrough go back to some of the previous videos um, again I think it's either uh, I think it's maybe three I think it's um, four or four three or four yeah. well watch them all and then sooner or later you'll get to it um, yeah so I, I think this was a good example um, I appreciate again Eric um, Clearing, clarifying the shield rules, which I don't use too often, but everybody can learn something um, every time you play. Uh, yeah, so. I'm constantly learning stuff. And maybe we'll do like a little mini ranged one, like a more modern ranged one, because it is almost so different when you're in that other setting. And, and uh, perhaps, Grenades. You have to deal with grenades. And perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we'll have robots attacking yeah. people who are trying to hold out. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll save that for later. Yeah. All right. So, again, this was uh, Tabletop Tango. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Um, I, I, I'm enjoying doing this, so hopefully people are enjoying watching. Uh, appreciate, again, Eric for all his, his knowledge that he brings to the table. Um, Eric, any final thoughts? No. Just, you know, have fun. Be creative. <laughs> Creative combat. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.